Hey, welcome. Today we're dealing with a VVT solenoid issue on a GM 2.4 liter Ecotec engine. This is the four cylinder found under the hood of a lot of cars and SUVs from GM ranging from the mid to late 2000s up through the early 20 teens. Now we're dealing with a variable valve timing solenoid circuit issue today. We're dealing with the trouble codes P0010, P0011, P0013, and P0014. These are not gonna be your timing chain stretch type of codes. These are gonna be solenoid issue type codes. And because of that, we're just gonna do a simple test today using a multimeter to check the spec on the solenoids and see what the resistance value is on them. Again, these solenoids are incredibly common on this engine. So let's get right into it. The first thing that we need to do is remove this air box assembly to gain access to our solenoid. So we'll take a flat blade screwdriver and we'll start here at the throttle body and we'll loosen up this essentially hose clamp that's clamping this air box to the throttle body. We don't need to uh, pull the clamp all the way off or anything, we'll just loosen it up. We'll do the same thing over here on the air box, again, just loosening it. Then there's a breather hose that goes into the air box like this and it goes into the, uh, into the top of the, basically the valve cover assembly here. We're gonna pull that straight out, straight towards the front, and we'll just spin that up out of the way. There's no sort of clip or anything on here, it's just going into a rubber fitting. And we'll remove our air box assembly and set that off to the side. That's gonna reveal our nice, pretty little cover here, hiding everything underneath. We'll pull the oil cap off. And pull the shield up and get it out of the way. Now this is gonna expose our two variable valve timing solenoids here. Now if you're chasing a trouble code that's related to the exhaust side, you're gonna be looking at the one on the back side closer to the firewall here, the black connector on that one. If you're chasing an intake problem, you're gonna be looking at the intake side, the front side of the engine here with the gray connector. So to be able to test these, we're gonna go ahead and unplug the connector. So we'll take our flat blade screwdriver and very gently raise up this locking tab. We'll do the intake side right away. You, might get, you guys might be able to see that better. Very gently moving up that locking tab and pressing in on the, on the detent here. We'll hopefully unplug our connector nicely. There we go. So we'll get that harness out of the way for now and let's do our resistance test. So we're gonna take our multimeter here if you're looking for a multimeter, there's a link down in the description for this one. So you can see here, it's all set to go. Check the resistance on our leads. We're zeroing them out. That looks really good. Let's go ahead and very carefully here, apply that to the two pins inside of this solenoid. Specification here is anywhere between eight and 13 ohms of resistance. You can see this thing bouncing all over the place. Again, I'll take my leads off, put them on again. All over the place. So with that meter bouncing all over the place like that, we're looking at a bad solenoid on here. More than likely what's happening is those two pins that are going into the body of the solenoid, their connections have gone bad for whatever reason. Heat, vibration over time has killed the solenoid resulting in our circuit code. Now. It's always a good idea because we're dealing with that on the exhaust side, the intake side's been in just as long, it's always a good idea to check that one as well. Even though it's not coating, it could be having an issue. So we'll just do the same test. Unplug the, the solenoid and check our resistance value. So 12.1, oh. It's kind of all over the place. Sometimes it's a good idea to try to move the pins a little bit. We're not putting a ton of pressure on there, but we're trying to just tweak the pins a little bit to get them to wiggle. And that wiggle is enough to, to kind of mess with them to give us maybe an intermittent problem. There we go, look at that. So we're kind of all over the place on this one as well. So being that we can't get a consistent, steady, Resistance reading on here is telling me that the terminals on the intake side also are somewhat loose or problematic inside of that solenoid. Now, you could just get away with putting the exhaust solenoid, uh, VVT solenoid in here right now to fix the trouble code that's on here. 
but more than likely this vehicle will run into an intake trouble code as well. So uh, it might not be a bad idea to replace both of them right away. Now, just to show you what a known good looks like, I have an intake, again, intake being gray connector, VVT solenoid with two nice uh, back probe or uh, uh, pins in here that give us a really, really solid connection. And I'll show you guys that you should be able to move these pins around a lot and not run into that intermittent connection problem. So you can see we're at 10 ohms of resistance and watch as I'm moving these, I'm wiggling these back and forth. I have an excellent connection inside of there. And the way the terminals go down into the body of the solenoid are nice and solid connections internally as well. See, beautiful. And actually I can take these two leads here. These are just going onto the pins. Now let's stick them on the intake solenoid here that is again, not setting a check engine light on this vehicle. Look at that. Just wiggling that back and forth is giving us widely varying uh, readings on there. So really this vehicle needs two variable valve timing solenoids. Nothing too uncommon here. Again, VVT solenoids on a GM 2.4, super, super common. Intake solenoid is going to be a gray connector, exhaust solenoid, the black connector. Now, if you're chasing an intermittent problem or a check engine light that's coming on even after you've replaced the solenoids, you could be dealing with a circuit issue or a PCM issue. Now, to be able to diagnose those, it's gonna take a little bit more than an ohm meter. If you're looking for a video on how to replace the solenoid, it's pretty straightforward. There is a link down in the description for that as well. We're gonna take you step-by-step step through replacement of the VVT solenoid. So, if this test was helpful for you, if you enjoyed the video, please give us that thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel if you have not already. That way you get notifications when we come out with our next video. Uh, again, I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, happy wrenching, everyone. Thank you.